This is a little post-processing tip on how I prepare waterfall images for further post-processing in Photoshop. We are in Lightroom here and what we are seeing is a photo of Taranaki Falls in New Zealand. And looking at it and also looking at the histogram, this photo is very bright and looking a little too bright for my taste. Um, I used the concept of exposing to the right here which I describe in another video tutorial. And what you see is if I turn on this triangle here, that only little parts of the image are overexposed and all the other part is just a little too bright but has all the details. Um, because this often happens when exposing to the right, I usually take bracketed, bracketed exposures or at least a second exposure, which are did here. Here you see it's more exposed to the left and I make sure that I have some space on the right here so all the details in the waterfall come out. So how do I process that sh such an image which is exposed far to the right? First of all I pull down the brightness a bit. So the top slider here it's a gem version I'm sorry didn't switch to English but uh, the sliders are in the same order as in the English version. So the top slider for the brightness, I bring it down a bit. So the overall image looks more like what I've seen that evening. And also the histogram shows a more evenly exposed image. What I then do, I also pull down the lights a bit. So we're starting to get the bright tones here. And then I pull up the dark tones, the shadows. Um, normally, I don't pull it up very, very far because this would introduce noise. And in this case here, where I first pull down the bright tones, I have a little bit more room to play and I can easily pull it up to 50 or 60 because in the end, the dark tones, as they were before, and as they are after pulling down the bright tones and then pulling up the shadows very far, uh, the same. So this way, pulling down overall brightness and gaining a little bit more on the shadows, I get a very even image. And if you look now at the triangle, you see there's nothing overexposed at all in this image. This was just uh, how it was pulled in in Lightroom. Um, let's go through some other settings. I set the white balance normally. I play around with the camera calibration, selecting one of the camera profiles here. Um, what I also do, I switch on the chromatic aberration removal and the profile correction. And as I've showed you in another video tutorial, I pull down the sharpening because the pre-sharpening, although it's called pre-sharpening, I'll do it after the processing in Photoshop. And I explain why I do this in another video. The rest I'll leave as it is. And for this image, although now all details are there, I'd expose, uh, export both photos, the bright one and the dark one, and load them into Photoshop layers which I've already done here. So here you see the bright image and the dark image below. And it doesn't matter how you organize the layers, you could put the bright on top and the dark below or vice versa. Uh, as I'm having the bright one on top, I put a mask on it. That was one too much. So one normal layer mask. I select a black brush with like 10% opacity and I'd paint in a little bit uh, of, of detail here in the bright parts. Just some further processing. There's a little bit more definition to the waterfall. I might go down with the opacity a bit, like 3%. So just slightly painting in some details. Well, and that's really it most of the time. My waterfall image processing starts exactly like this. 
with this flat image, I then go through some more of my post-processing workflow, which I show in two of my longer tutorials. And I usually end up with a good high quality image then. Here we have another example where I applied the same concept, the same pre-processing. I just show this because the last image was very easy to deal with because it was very even light. So here we have a situation where the dynamic range is much, much higher. So even this exposed to the right image uh, has here the mountains of the histogram quite far to the left and um, with this exposing to the right and then applying my processing my pre-processing here even even more pulling it down to minus 1.6 and also pulling out the dark turns to plus 95 you still see although there's no more uh, exposure warning blinking there's no detail at all in those bright parts so for this image it was really important to have a darker exposure um, but what i can show you here even better than in the other image you see i pulled down the dark tones to plus 95 and if you look at the dark tones you see in the end they're not much brighter and also i didn't introduce uh, additional noise here that's because i first pulled down the bright tones and then pulled up the shadows and by this I get a much more even image, although here the bright tones show no detail. But as before, I can remedy this in Photoshop quite easily by loading those two exposures and then selecting a black brush and like 10% opacity and just paint in the details here. And I don't even need a selection for waterfall images. I just pull, pull, draw roughly across the bright parts and here a bit more just to bring in the details. And to make this blend a little more convincing because now it starts to look really flat for this image I would put a curves layer above the dark one and give this a bit more contrast to the bright tones but not so it clips just to make the blend more even So a little S curve applied here. So before and after. So this was a very easy blending. And now this image is a good start for further processing. I might even pull in a little bit of the sky. But since this is white anyway, I have to handle it differently in the lighter processing. Then flatten the image and from here it's my normal processing workflow.